It's Danny Flexant here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the former undefeated British super middleweight champion, Lorraine Richards, uh, bidding for the vacant European title soon enough. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. Um, yeah, it feels, uh, feels like a long time since I last seen you, last spoke to you. But yeah, I feel great. Um, I'm in camp now. I've been training since the start of the new year. So can't wait to get out there and pick up this W, well, not WBO, European, <laughs> European title. Getting a bit far ahead of myself I was here. Say, but... You've given us a bit of a clue to your future plans there. Watch yeah, out, um, watch out well... Canelo and Billy Joe. <laughs> yeah um get this european title and then um, we'll look towards bigger and better um, better things it's on the 15th of may uh in in london on a matchroom show presumably uh giovanni de carolis veteran uh, he's fought most of the kind of cream of the european crop in his time in the sport kind of fringe world level i think it's fair to say you know he gave a uh, zoiga two hard fights he beat feigen butts so he's definitely a step up from where you've been fighting is it the mm -hmm. right fight for you at the right time, do you think? I believe so. You know, I've been asking um, for a step up now because I believe that the better the opponent, the better Lauren Richards that people see. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for this fight. I know this guy's a good operator, a tough operator, and um, I'm expecting a very hard night. And um, But I'll showcase my skills in a night and everyone will know exactly what Lauren Richards is all about, for sure. Style-wise, what sort of contest do you expect? Um, you know, that's hard for me to say. You know, I don't know what he's going to do. I can only worry about what I'm going to do. And, um, you know, and that's that's the main thing. I know if I turn up 100%, which I always do, um, and I turn up on the night, I'll do the job and I'll do it very well. You're already world ranked by the WBO, um, hence that Freudian slip at the start of the interview. But this, yeah. um, winning the European title, Car the Carolis is also WBC international champion, I think, should give you quite a mm -hmm. high WBC ranking as well. Is that part of yeah. the, the um, attraction of this fight? It kind of keeps your options open? Well, to be honest, I ain't really thought about, like, I know I mentioned the WBO earlier, like, but it's not, um, I'm not really thinking about world level at this moment in time. I'm just thinking about this European title. Like, I believe that it's something to learn at every level, like I've always said. And I've won the British, the Commonwealth, and, you know, I've won other international titles at like WBO European and WBO International. And this is the next step in, you know, in the right direction. It's a good division to be in. There's a lot of kind of young talent emerging. You wouldn't expect by the time you get to challenging for the world level that Canelo will be, or Saunders, whoever wins, will be undisputed champion or even have three belts. You would think there'll be opportunities for fighters like yourself in a year or two's time. Yeah, but yeah, absolutely. Um, this division is a sexy division and uh, it's, it's great to be part of it. Um, but, you know, I haven't really thought about, you know, the world level finals yet. I've always, you know, stayed in my lane and um, stayed focused on what my journey was all about. And my, my aim now is to win Euro the European and conquer Europe. So that I'll be able to say I was British, Commonwealth and European title and champion. And once I win the European title, what's next? And do you, as you're saying, you're, you're not, ready for world level just yet or you don't want to go to world level just yet I should say do you see yourself staying at European level should you win the title on the 15th of May obviously the British you gave up pretty quick because you wanted the European are you mm. are you willing to dwell at that level for a bit longer you know um, you know with the British in the Commonwealth titles I gave them up for you know for good reason so I can push on with my career you know after I won the Brit well after I vacated them titles I signed to a new promotional team, you know, and obviously now I'm happy. I'm the happiest I've been. And, you know, what they always say, cliche, but, you know, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. Um, I've got this opportunity for the European title, which I've always wanted. You know, I've dreamt of being um, EBU champion, holding that blue belt, you know, that blue strap. And, um, you know, I, I tend to do so. Um, you know, when it comes to that, all the world level, you know, the world titles and stuff, and, um, you know, where I'm going to step up next after this fight, I don't know. I've got a hard challenge in front of me on the 15th of May. And, um, you know, I'm fully focused on that. You said you've kind of dreamed of being the European champion. You don't hear many fighters in Britain saying that. It's usually either world champion or the Lonsdale belt, obviously, which you've already won. What is it about the European title that makes it so attractive? Is it a fighters that you followed when you were younger or is it just the look of the belt? What, what is it? 
Do you know, I always believed, like I said before, like you've got to learn, there's something to learn at every level. And, you know, once I've won, I've won the British and Commonwealth now, no one can say Lerone ain't one of the best fighters in Great Britain. And once I win a European title, people say, oh, Lerone's the best in Europe. So what's next is the world. You know, I, I just want to tick boxes for myself and to say that, you know, I picked up every belt on the way. You know, you look at fighters like Billy Joe Saunders, he's done it. You know, Ian Napa, um, James Cook, um, the list, the list, list goes on. And um, it, these are the fighters, obviously, that I, I've looked at um, throughout the years. And I, you know, I've looked up to, you know, especially Ian Napa. And um, I've always, you know, wanted to carry that EDU title. And that's what I tend to do. Yeah, it was quite a big night when he won the European title, wasn't it? Wasn't that the one? It was like sweltering hot. At, what was it? Your call? It was your call. Yeah, it was your call. Yeah, the Frenchman. He wasn't. He, he was the underdog, and it was just ridiculously yeah, that hot temperature. Frenchman. And he got the job done. You got the job done. Yeah, and do you know what? Like the EB, the EBU title, I think it's sort of a lot of people nowadays they skip levels. You'll get a lot of fighters that they'll pick up say international titles and they'll run with that and then get world rankings in. They'll get a world title shot. You know I me. Mean? I want to do everything at the right time, and you know, once picking up the belts, you know, going into a world title fight, confident. I'm British. I'm Commonwealth champion, European title, and I deserve this shot, and I'm ready for the shot. And that's exactly what I will feel like when I'm in that ring. And you said you're happy now that you're with a new promotional company. What, what is it about them that that they're doing for you that leads to that kind of satisfaction or contentment? Well. I believe I get a little bit more, I've got a lot more promotion, you know, look, when I signed with Match and got more promotion than what I've ever got in my whole career, you know, you know, more people, um, you know, you know about me and, you know, it's, I'm more active, like, as soon as I signed with Match and boom, yeah, got a fight right. out. Yeah. do you know what I mean? And like, I've been sitting on the shelf for so long, unappreciated, no one appreciated what I did, it's like I was just a side man, like, who gives it, it's like I was a side chick, no one cared about it. Do you know what I mean? And um, yeah, now, <laughs> now, um, you know, uh, I can sort of push on my career and get what I want. And obviously, it's the European title. Now, something I did want to ask you about, and I'm sure you've been expecting the question. When you initially vacated the uh, British title, your mandatory challenger at the time was Willie Hutchinson, um, and there uh -huh. were, I'm not even going to say rumours. He said outright he felt you were avoiding him. Um, and mm. he then went for the vacant title this past weekend and was uh, brutally stopped, I think it's fair to say, by Lennox Clark, someone that you uh, defeated uh, to win the title mm. yourself. What what did you make of that? And, and do you, it sounds harsh, but do you take any satisfaction from that, given the things he'd said previously? Hmm. I want to say, do you know what? I don't wish anyone any bad luck. Like I said before, I I stay in my own lane. You know, a lot of these fighters, they call me out, they say all these things and I look it and I read it or people send me screenshots of what they said. And I look and I think, I'll nod my head and think, oh, you know, that's ludicrous. I don't know why you're saying that. You know, you lot must think I'm crap. You know, I won all this stuff and then you must think I'm crap or I can't hold my hands up. And I just think to myself, all right, cool, no problem. So like I said, I stay in my lane. I don't, but when I saw um, Lennox Clark and Willie Hutchinson get announced, I had no feeling because I don't know Willie Hutchinson's personally I don't know Lennox, Lennox Clark personally so I had no feeling I just thought you know what, let me sit back and watch it as a spectator um, obviously looking at things on social media what Willie was saying about Lennox and saying about me and you know I thought to myself okay well it's not that easy I felt like um, this sort of or well, Willie sort of um, because of how he, the way he behaved like he never rated me he felt it was like because Lerone Richards is crap, um, Lennox Clark must be rubbish because Lerone beat Lennox Clark. And because I believe that I'm levels above Lerone Richards, I must beat Lennox Clark easy. And um, it came unstuck. Yeah, so you think there was an element of kind of taking it for granted, perhaps? Yeah, I do believe so. But neither here or there, like I've always said, I'm the best fighter in Great Britain and you know, it's starting to show now. Yeah, I suppose if anything, it only adds to your status because someone you've defeated 
I thought on a night fairly comfortably, although it was a split decision, has now gone mm-hmm. on to conclusively defeat a, a highly touted prospect. That's it, absolutely. And it's it's funny you say that, and it's nice, you know, that you you say that because now it's like you can see there's levels. You know, I've now separated myself from these domestic club. I'm now moving on to European level now, and I've earned my spot. And once I won the European title, no one can say anything then when I step up again and when I step up again. And, um, but listen, you know, it, it was a good fight while it lasted and um, I wish them both all the best um, in the future. That's very magnanimous of you. Um, 15th of May, obviously, we're starting to step out of lockdown step by step. We don't know what it's, the rules are going to be by then, but there's a decent chance, I would say, that there will be fans in attendance. Is that something that yeah. excites you, the, the return of fans to boxing? Yeah, like, it would be nice. It would be nice. Um, but frankly, I don't, it doesn't bother me too much, you know, but it would be nice if we saw fans. Yeah, it does make a difference. And it's always nice to have a good atmosphere out there. It's nice, yeah, for sure. Stuff. And I just want to ask you as well, just to get your take while we're here. Super middleweight is your division. You might not be looking at world level just yet, but the biggest fight of this year probably will be at super middleweight mm. and first up we've got May the 8th Billy Joe Saunders challenging well not challenging sorry he's world champion in his own right unifying against Canelo how do you see that fight playing out? Um, You know it's not an easy fight for both of them and it's all about how they both establish themselves I feel Billy Joe Saunders if anyone's going to beat Canelo Alvarez you know out of the super middleweights I believe it would be Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Plant um, because um, I feel, yeah, Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Plant. Um, but obviously when it comes to this fight with Canelo, I feel Billy Joe needs to use his, bo- his boxing, he needs to use, use his movement, um, he needs to be very intelligent in that ring. And um, I believe he can win, but, you know, it's a hard ask with Canelo because he's on such great form. You know, if you go, if you go on form, you, you're going to go with Canelo. Um, but um, Billy Joe Saunders always rises to the occasion. And um, one thing for sure um, with Billy, um, I know him personally, he's not going to himself and he's definitely going to put himself out there. He's not going to be a yield gem. He's definitely going to put himself out there and come to win. Have you done any work with Billy, uh, sparring-wise? Oh, years ago, I'd done a lot of work with Billy when he was training with, uh, when he was fighting Andy Lee, I was his main fight, I was his main sparring partner. Um, but obviously we kept in contact, um, you know, uh, um, we're cool, me and Billy. We're cool. Yeah. What did you make of those sparring sessions? I know it's only sparring, and you were a lot earlier in your career back then. But what what did that tell you about where you were and, and where you, how far you could go? See, I always knew, like, um, I've always believed in myself. I've always backed myself. Um, obviously, it was at that time where I was in a, I was on a break with my. Um, from boxing because of managerial issues and I wanted to get the, as much experience as I can and what it did show me is that I can operate at that level and um, with it, with time and with experience and um, Billy Joe always told me you know that I would get to this level and beyond so you know uh, I'm going to prove myself right and prove him right too I wonder if he expected that you guys would fight one day because that is now more on the cards than ever before <laughs> Well, yeah, but I, I, listen, I'll never chase Billy Joe. Like, if there's loads of super middleweights out there, there's there's um there's other world champions, and by the time I'm up there, I'm sure Billy Joe would have probably moved on. Then, um, but um, we'll see. Good we'll stuff. see. Well, I wish you the very best of luck for the rest of your camp, and um, yes, hopefully we can we can have a chat again probably on fight week, I guess. I appreciate. It. Yeah, I just want to thank you know my sponsor FCI Markets and um, Boxfit um, for all the support. Um, you know, um, my coach Dave Coldwell and my um, management team, S Jam, um, for the backing. Good stuff. And match room, of course. <laughs> and they, yeah, match room. get annoyed that you left them out. <laughs> <laughs> and, match, and match room too, yeah. Good stuff. All right, mate. Well, yeah, I'll speak to you again soon. And uh, yeah, I hope camp goes well. All right. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Take care. All right, mate.